at one point, weren't you, were you considering being the new frontman of NXS or was that just a one-off thing or? That is another very interesting story that came about because they had heard, I had heard a rumor. Okay. That I was joining NXS. I had heard Wait, you heard a rumor that you were I joining? I had heard it? a rumor. I had heard a rumor from a couple people. Hey, what's this about you joining NXS? I had absolutely no idea where this even started. Okay. It was in addressing the rumor through the media that they heard that I was saying, no, that they got the idea to ask if I would do it. So it was actually me debunking so a sides. rumor. <laughs> it was while I was debunking a rumor that in the process of debunking the rumor, they heard the rumor and then said, hey, let's take a gamble and ask if, you, if you'll do it. So I was very good, good friends with Michael Hutchins, Michael Hutchins. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, that's how that, that happened. It was strange. And then, of course, um, we did the opening of the Olympic Stadium in Sydney in the year 2000. Right. Um, and that's what led them to invite me the next year to be Jesus in Godspell. And I was really excited about that because it was like, you know, I grew up doing Godspell in junior high school. Mm -hmm. So I knew that like the back of my hand. And and uh, that they asked me to play the Jesus character. I was like, dude, that's like, yeah, man. The Australians love these bitches. Yeah, man. It's about time. Because, you know, I always felt like it probably looked closer to me than he did to Chris Sarandon or whoever plays motherfucking in the movies anyway when I was a kid, you know. Um, but the, the irony is the very day I was meant to get on the plane, the producer and the, and the, and the, the uh, director got into a huge fight because the director had prompt in order to get me on board, promised I could contribute a song mm -hmm. to the situation to give me another song to sing. And uh, there were already problems, right. doing, but I guess that was the straw that broke the camel's back and literally got a call an hour before I was going to leave for the airport that they had canceled, postponed it until they sorted out all this other stuff, which by which point I had moved on. But yeah, that rumor was, was, was true. And, that rumor led to some other stuff. And then eventually they asked if I wanted to be a permanent member, but that was in the very beginning of me going into the transition uh, full time in, in earnest and realized it wouldn't have been in my best interest to, to have lent my energy to that. So the way you create now, is it when the spirit moves you or like, are you your, your final say, are you your boss? Are you like, okay. Yes. Um, are yeah. you in an ideal place now creatively? I've been in an ideal place creatively um, since the very, very beginning because I I, I was spoiled um, that I, I've always had creative control. And I the first record was the only time I've ever even made demos. Um, but I, I my answer is like this. I'm 62 years old. I've been doing this my entire life. Who the fuck else should I be listening to but but me? I, I, I've always believed in my taste as an artist, meaning that, you know, if I can tell someone else has made great music, I don't see why all of a sudden it's impossible for me to know that I've done something tasteful or or captured something. Um, it is just, it is just, and the energy that I inherited back into the process of creating when I no longer had to defend myself or answer questions. Or oh, why are you starting... Why are you starting the um, wild card with this this kind of banjo? We kind of why why are you doing why are you got your, I just got tired of all that shit. I mean, Man, just, look, I love when you go dirty. Like the dirtier the shit sound, the most the the yeah. cassette just drums yeah. untuned. I love that shit. 